This video demonstrates how to read data from a text file and assign the data from the text file to a table variable, T popcorn. Now that we've created variables and we know the underlying layout of our data file, we need to tell the bot to find the raw data in our text file. So the first action or command that we need to have our bot perform is we need it to open the text file. We're gonna open our text file using our actions menu but we first have to open our actions menu by clicking one time. Then we can use the scroll bar to navigate until we locate the CSV slash text menu option. Remember, the menus are ordered alphabetically to help us find the commands that we would like. Go ahead and click once to expand that menu option and then find the open command. Double click on the open command to move it onto our workbench. Now that we have the open command on our workbench, we need to configure the command. The first thing that we need to configure is we need to tell the bot where it's going to find the file. I know that I saved my text file onto my desktop, so I'm going to click on the desktop file and then I'll click on the normal browse button. It may take a few seconds for it to download the dependencies, but once it does, then you'll be able to navigate around your desktop to find the appropriate file location just like you would any other time you're searching through file folders. I happen to know that I saved mine on CPOP and then I went ahead and saved it under the CPOP folder. So I click it once to select it and then click open. When I do, the file is now being read into the bot. We know that this particular text file does not have a header, so we're not going to select the box that says contains header. And we also happen to know that our underlying file is comma delimited. So that we can go ahead and leave the radio button for comma as our delimiter checked. It's usually good practice to go ahead and trim both your leading and trailing spaces since computer programs tend to have a little bit of trouble when it comes to spaces. Typically they'll read it as they'll read the spaces as so it's something there instead of the way that we read it with nothing there. And then we want to go ahead and change the encoding to ANSI since our underlying code for our text file is ANSI. Once we've gone ahead and configured the tool, then we can go ahead and click on apply. And now we can see that we're done with our configuration. If you need to go back and adjust it later, then just clicking once again will bring back the options that you had originally to configure the command. Now that we've told our bot to open the text file, we can tell our bot to go ahead and read the data in the text file and assign the data to a table variable. This would be similar to us copying the data from the text file and having it written into an Excel or CSV file where, the, again, the commas are going to allow the values to be placed in the appropriate columns. While we could do this directly with the sample data set, we cannot copy and paste the data from the large data set without losing information. Since the number of rows in the large data set, 1.6 million, exceed the number of rows of data that can be written into an Excel spreadsheet. To program your bot to read the data, go ahead and locate the read command, again under the CSV text heading, and double click to move it onto your workbench. If this was not the right place for it or somehow it, it ended up pasting before your open command, then you could go ahead and reorder it by dragging and clicking or releasing once you see that dashed line. But it is the second step that we'd like it to do, so we'll go ahead and leave it there. In this case, we can see that we need to assign the value to a variable. And it says it needs a variable type of table. Well, we didn't create a table variable yet. So what we can do as we're programming our bot is we can create the table variable by clicking on the magic wand to the right of that box and saying create a variable. Just like when we did our variables at the beginning, we have the option to name it, but we will not change the type because this is going to be a table type and that's the only type that the read file is going to allow us to do. So we're going to type in T and then popcorn. We don't need to check any other configurations, so we can then select the create and select button. Once we're done configuring our tool, we have to again hit the apply button.
Now that we've told our bot to read the data from the text file and store the data in our table variable t popcorn, we can go ahead and close the text file. Closing the text file is not necessary, but it could save memory space as we run future functions. Go ahead and program your bot to close the file by clicking on the close option under the CSV text menu. There's no need to configure this command unless you want to add a session name, in which case you should add a session name to all of your steps. So all we need to do is end up clicking on the save button.